Are you looking for truth from God's Word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons, Bible teacher and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. I could be at any other church probably in America, not maybe in the role of interim pastor, but God has called me here. And so whatever we go through together, I'm accepting it as a sovereign God is doing this to grow me, grow Carol and me, and grow us so that we would be a model to this Christian community on how to grow through issues that will help us to be stronger for him. If you're comfortable with that concept, would you say amen? Okay, so let's continue now. I commit myself to, but before you go to number one, I'd like you to write this in. I commit myself to the Lord and then to you by extension, the following. So this covenant that I'm making is really to the Lord. I believe it's biblical, so I believe it's an acceptable covenant that I can make with the Lord, but I'm doing it to you by extension. So I see myself having to answer to God for this covenant, what it says, and my um, ability to be able to keep it. I'll explain that later. All right. I commit myself to number one, so let's begin. To love the Lord, my God, with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. If I had a place to begin, I couldn't think of a better place to begin is to covenant to you that I have a love affair with God, a spiritual love affair with God first. If I love Him with all of my heart, soul, and mind, it'll have a byproduct that I should then love others. And the first person that I would love others would be my sweet wife. So if I'm properly in love with the Lord, it'll spill over into my love affair with my wife and then love affair with others that are out there, if you know what I'm saying. That's the first commandment. Would you read the verse out loud with me that I have in your folder there? Read it together. And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. So I want you to know that I am going to lead you, hopefully my modeling, not only lip service that I love the Lord, but that you'll be able to see it and hear it in the things that I do. Because I believe this, here's where we're going with this, that our intimacy with the Lord will properly fuel our outreach for the Lord. You catch that? And the deeper that we go with the Lord, the more joy that we will have the more excitement and passion we're going to have to be able to reach out to others and touch them. Stay with me now. And that we won't need another person's love because God's love filled our tank completely. And we can pour out His love to others because that love that we have in our tank will constantly be be being refilled so we can love others. So my commitment to you is to love the Lord first and then, of course, love others and, by extension, my wife and my family next. We're going to be a church that really worships and loves him and the freedom that he's allowed us to have. Number two, I commit myself to the Lord and to you by extension to labor long hours in God's word, in prayer, and in ministry to further us all toward spiritual maturity in Christ. I'd like to read this longer verse so you can sense where my heart is when I say the word labor and to work in the word, in prayer, in ministry with the purpose of helping you to go deeper with the Lord. It goes like this, and I'll just read this one. It's a long one. Let no one look down on your youthfulness. Let me pause. I'm older than I look, okay? And I I get tired or quicker, and my mind isn't quite as sharp as it used to be. But on the other side of it, Carol says, I'm just a kid in a grown man's body. So there is an element of youthfulness in there. So I let it speak to me anyway. He says, don't let anyone look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, purity. Here's a key. Show yourself. In other words, I not only need to mentor you by speaking, not only minister to you, but I need to be able to be someone who models this for you. So I am to model myself an example of those who believe, and not just anybody who believes, but especially those who are blood-bought, born-again believers in Christ and are living that faith. Then it says, until I come, Paul writing to Timothy in the pastoral epistle, so it's really kind of in my wheelhouse of pastoring, Paul says, until I come, 
give attention to public reading of Scripture. That's why we had Scott read Scripture. Now, he, ex- he read Scripture as an extension of the pastor reading Scripture because I passed that to him. The bottom line is, here it is, that you hear God's Word read to you. So it's not so much a time of reading Scripture because uh, that's liturgy in the church. It is a command of God to do that. And then it says, to exhortation and to teaching. So now we go beyond public reading of Scripture, but to exhort and to teach. What? Scripture. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you. All right? My gift tends to be leadership. My gift tends to be teaching. It's sometimes fleshed out in my calling of pastoring, administrating, leading. Which was bestowed on you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. That means others recognized it and they identified it publicly. Take pains with these things. So that's telling Stan here, work hard at it. You should toil to the point of weariness. When you go to bed at night, you should have no trouble falling asleep because you're tired doing what God's called you to do. Then it says, be absorbed in them. So in other words, when you cut my wrist, my wrist will bleed. Scripture, praying, ministry to others, wanting others to come to faith alone in Christ and to go on to become a fully obedient worshiper of Him. Now, why do I do that? So that your progress will be evident to all. So in other words, you will see me, watch this, not only living the Christian faith, watch this now, but you're going to see me growing in my faith as well. Did you catch that difference? So that what I'm sharing with you now, I hope a year from now, I'm either closer to the Lord and or more knowledgeable in God's Word and doing even a more effective job. You ought to see progress. We've had a dear man of God working here in the sun I don't know how many days, and many of you do volunteer work, but I've seen this man paint our curbs, the yellow and white. How many of you saw that when you drove in? All right? This guy has done it in the heat. And it's neat to watch a painter work, because when he works, you can always see where he's been. I don't mean about all the drips on the windows when they paint your house, but I'm talking about there's progress. You want to see progress in in my life, and hopefully I'd like to see progress in your life. So to do that, I am going to labor to get that done. Let's go a little bit further. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. If you have your Bible, you might want to put a number one by the word yourself and a number two in your teaching, which basically means this. You take care of yourself first and then teaching the word to others. So you first, then others. That's not selfishness. No more than a mother will eat the right food, so when she breastfeeds, the child, the infant, will get the better food. You're no more selfish when you're on the airplane and they say, when that little bag comes down, put it on your face before you put it on your child's face next to you. Is it selfishness? No, it's take care of yourself for the whole purpose of taking care of others. Labor to the point of taking care of me with the intention of taking care of you better. It goes back. It says, persevere in these things. That means no matter how hard it is, Stan, Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't quit on God. Don't quit the calling. Don't quit doing these things. For as you do this, you will ensure the salvation both of yourself and those who hear you. And I don't necessarily mean it just means someone goes to heaven now. A little bit of that, but it's broader than that. It means that we are all growing in grace and saved from all the consequences of sin in our life because we're helping to do this together. So I promise to labor long hours in God's Word, prayer, and helping you to have a walk with the Lord that's meaningful. Now, to do that, we have to go to number three. I have to remember this. To accomplish number two, number three has to kick in. I need to limit my time to a proper balance between personal devotion, precious family, and public ministry. So in other words, I have to be a good time manager. I have to give proper time to what I like to call the old farmer, the dairy farmer's three-legged stool. Those three areas need to be in balance. If they're not in balance, it'll be wobbly. If it's way out of balance, I'll fall down. I'll hurt myself and maybe hurt others. So what do I need to limit my time to do so that I'm properly balanced in personal devotions? It is important for me to have a quiet time. So now I'm giving you approval to come to me at any time and say, Stan, did you have your quiet time with the Lord today? What did you get out of it? How's the Lord been speaking to you? What have you learned for your own personal life development? What have you learned that got you so excited you couldn't wait to tell someone else? Now, if you ask me that question, 
be ready to stay around long enough for me to answer it. You know what I mean by that? That's number one. Let's go back to the passage. I also said here that I want to have time for my precious family. For, for, for Stan, there is life beyond make it clear. Ministry, the radio, the writing, the global speaking that I do. There's life beyond Florida Bible College, and I want to equip the next generation leaders. There is life beyond you here at Circle. So if this dance doesn't last as long as neither one of us want it to, it's okay. I'm okay. But there's no life for me beyond Carol. I know there is with the Lord, but to me, that's going to be the greatest pain of loss. And so I'm going to do everything I can to preserve my family. Years ago, Carol got this at a uh, garage sale. She's a garage sale queen. Most of my clothes someone else wore before I did. (laughs) But anyway, she does that to economize. We have this ceramic bank, and you'll hear me use this illustration. It's a barrel with two naked people in it. Remember the old cartoons when you had no money, you'd wear a barrel for clothes? How many remember that? Raise your hand. Okay, good. I'm not the only nut here. On the outside of this bank, because they're so poor, two people don't have any money for clothes, so they're wearing this barrel. It says this, at least we have each other. Can I tell you that's who we are? And so I really love you, but I'll do everything I can to preserve my wife and her feelings. And she'll do everything she can like a mama bear to protect mine. But you want it that way. Because if we can help model through all the isms and spasms of life, whether it's finances, fitness, friends, foes, whatever, we need to go through it so we can help you to do it. And we need to do it right. And then number three here, I'm going to limit my time also to do public ministry. Because it's not just about, you know, let go, let God, time in the Word, and smooching with your wife all the time. It is about reaching others for Christ. We are passionate about lost people. I am passionate about all these condos and apartments that are within walking distance, closer, stone's throw, of where we are. I am passionate about our missionaries and what they're enduring on the field for the sake of the gospel. I am passionate about our church being a safe, comfortable place that is user-friendly, not seeker-driven, just user-friendly for these people so that we can present the gospel and help them to go out and do it again. So I am concerned about ministry, but I've got to limit myself to those three things. Let's go to number four. Number four I think you'll appreciate especially. By the way, let me read to you Ephesians 5.15 for those that are listening on radio. Ephesians 5.15 says this, Therefore, be careful how you walk. That means what I do with my life. Not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most use of your time, because the days are evil. So I struggle with those three areas, personal devotions, precious family, public ministry, but I'm going to work on it. I think you do too. So I'm saying that now that I want to help you have a quiet time with the Lord. I want you to have a wonderful relationship with your family as best as it can happen. People are people. I get that. And that you'll also have time for ministry, but that one doesn't trump the other, that they're all very much important, and they all have to work in symphony together. We'll do it. Now, number four. Listen to the wise counsel. My commitment is to listen to the wise counsel of godly leaders whom the Lord has placed in my life and in this church. Circle the word listen there, if you will, because I want to say this. I can, I can listen to you because you are, you are speaking words that I understand the words and I hear the words. But when I write the word listen here, I'm saying I want to listen with my mind, which means I want to understand what are you saying, and then I want to listen with my heart to understand why are you saying that, what do you mean by that, How will that help me? How will that help us as a church or you as a family? I want you to speak, and I want to listen to you. I've been writing blogs that never got to the radio yet. I did send out one to a bunch of leaders now, and I talked to them about the 12 greatest traits that leaders need to have. And number one was to listen to their constituency. I'm writing another one, the greatest myths that pastors believe. And one is when everybody's happy with you, They're not all happy with you. (laughs) All right, let's go back to this one. So I know that some of you are going to jump on us and start giving us your opinions about this, your opinions about that. And I want you to know that bring it on. Bring it on. Because we can't scratch you where you itch if we don't know where you're itching. Did you catch that? 
And so I do want you to know you can speak to us. But go back to the little phrase I said, to the wise counsel of godly leaders. It doesn't say to counsel of leaders. It says wise counsel. So when you give advice, pray through it. Think it through. Go deeper in what you're about ready to share. Put it all together in a package. Dip your arrow then in honey and then let it fly. Be wise. Be godly. And I promise you, I will listen because it's highly likely that what you say is going to be the truth and we'll be better for it. So let's read the verse. It says, Where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Now, that's not a standalone verse. When we were uh, doing our, our month in Colorado, Carol and I spent a, a, an exorbitant amount of time in God's Word, and especially in Proverbs, because I wanted to read it more to totally at one time to see if there is a bigger, how can I say, a layered Pass a, a, a layer level of truth that was being spit out from Solomon through most of Proverbs so I could get a bigger picture of it. But the thing that kept coming to me, probably anticipating that I'd be in this role and God was taking his, his word through the Spirit and just slapping me in the face was this, counselors are important. Listen to counsel. Go to them before you make war. And I don't think we're going to have war, but before we build... And so I want you to know I'm committing myself to listen to you because it's important. As long as you commit yourself to allow me to listen to the Lord after you share that and run it through the grid of Scripture, things that I might know beyond where you are, not that I know more than you, more better than you, but I might know more things around what's happening. But I want you to speak, and I will give you my heart and my ear. Number five. I commit to the Lord and to you that I'll launch only the ministries that will help us do four things. Number one, to trust God more fully. Again, that goes back to your intimacy with the Lord, but I want you to trust Him with all of your heart, and my messages are going to be the things that will help you to do that, and our ministries here through small groups and other things is to help you to have that intimacy with the Lord so you can rely upon Him. Watch this, that He is large and in charge in your life and that he is near and dear in your life. I want you to have that. So I'm thinking about how I can help you and what we can do to orchestrate what we're doing here in ministries. So we're not just doing a ministry because, oh, I read that in a book. Or, oh, so-and-so's doing that. We ought to do that. Maybe they are, maybe not. What I really want to know is you are the sheep of his pasture here now at this time. You're the ones that God brought to the dance. And so I want to work together with you on that. Number two. So you'd understand our faith more deeply. I'm going to share some things at the end of this message, end of our service today, where we're headed more specifically later. Number three, to relate to one another more closely. I want to deal with any conflicts that's going on. I want us to be able to give each other the time for God to grow us. I want us to love even those that do the things that they do. I want us to make sure that we're speaking words that will edify to one another. I want us to come together more. So I'm wanting to consider ministries that do that. And then to, this is an important one, and to serve God and our neighbors locally and globally more unreservedly. I'm committed to local and global evangelism as well. So while we're going to do all this stuff, I'm never forgetting what it's like to be unsaved and how they need the Lord. Let me read the passage. This is one of my life verses in the area of ministry development. So if you want to know, do I have a life verse in ministry development? It probably would be this one. We proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. Put a line under the word every man. Teaching every man. Put two lines under that word every. Not one line, two lines. Every man with all wisdom. So that we may present every man. Put three lines under that word every. One under number one, two under the second time, three under the third time that we may present every man complete in Christ, mature in Christ, maturing in Christ. For this purpose, I, your shepherd, will labor to the point of weariness. Now, here's where it gets really cool. Don't miss this. Wake up. Here we are. Striving according to his power, which works inside of me mightily. So I do not want to do this in the flesh. I want to do it by his power, in his strength, to do what? Watch this now. Reach each. Teach each each, so that they would come to faith alone in Christ and to go on to become a fully obedient worshiper of God. Number six, I commit myself to the Lord and to you by extension to lead 
and love you by dying to myself and being a servant to all. Jesus said this, It is not this way among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. Let me pause. I don't have any visions of grandeur. I'm not building the college based on the church. I'm not up here trying to build an empire to stand ponds. What I'm really trying to do is to help you be all that God wants you to, to be. And I'll die trying. Let's go back to the passage. It says here, Servant, whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. So in other words, I want to serve you with my attitude. I want to slave myself to you as my action. I want to do it out of desire. I want to do it out of duty. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life for ransom. What better model could I ever have to do this other than the Lord? And the beauty of all of that is the Lord's not so much in heaven as he is right now in me, the hope of glory. So this can be done if I let the Jesus in me come out in that. Number seven. I'm committing myself to the Lord and to you dear people, by extension, to lean heavily on the Lord for wisdom, because I'm going to need that. Courage. Sometimes I'll have to speak words that uh, I'd rather not. Strength, because um, this is hard work. But most importantly, to do it to avoid temptations in the flesh. Because we all have them. Whether it's greed, bitterness, moral impurity, whatever we struggle with and all the different ramifications of that. And I want to do it in a humble fashion when I fail. I want to own it. I want to apologize. I want to ask your forgiveness. And then I want to ask God that I'll never do that again. I'll get help with that. And here's my passage. Scripture says, all of you, all of you, clothe yourself with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud. And those who are raised up in position of power and authority find it a lot easier to really let pride go to seed. But he says, but he gives grace to the humble. And dear ones, I really need grace to do, to do what I'm going to do here. And yet, I have the easiest job because I follow a great man of God but it's still going to be a challenge. You might say, well, why is that since you're following such a great guy? Because I never want to underestimate the power of Satan who wants to destroy God's work. Do you agree with that? And at the same time, I will never forget that it's not like the Mad Magazine, spy versus spy to see who's more powerful. It's not God versus, Christ, or God versus Satan, who's more powerful. God is powerful. He loves you. I just, I walk through the sanctuary nearly every morning that I'm here. It's still dark outside, and I walk this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, and I do this for about 30 minutes, and I pray down every row for these seats. I walk up and down these hallways. I, I, God is my witness as I speak to you, and I ask God to make our, our hallways so full of traffic we bump into one another that we are jammed full of people here, not for crowd's sake, but because we want the word of God to go out, to be recorded accurately and clearly properly, that we could film this, we can get it out, so that people could hear what's coming from this pulpit and hopefully come and hear more by the extension of the ministries in this great church. So folks, I pray that you go with us on this journey. Don't know what it's going to look like just yet, but I know who's going to lead it. Our gracious Heavenly Father, these are very ambitious and some bit high uh, points and principles in this covenant that I so desire to have in my life and to perform. And so, Lord, I know theologically without you I can't get it done. I know theologically that you will give grace. I know theologically that I have you, the hope of glory, the Holy Spirit, and God in me. I'm not the Spirit, I'm not Christ, I'm not God, but you are in me. So therefore, I have all that's necessary that pertains to godliness. Now it'll just require me doing one thing, relying on you, walking by means of the Spirit, moment by moment, in love. And so, Lord, I just ask that you'll perform a miracle in our life together and helping us to be all that you'd have us to be so we can be all the church you want us to be. For your glory. It is in your name we pray.
Amen. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607-901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear.